In a broad overhaul of his closest associates, Vladimir Putin has sacked his incompetent defense minister and installed a Kremlin puppet with no military background in his place. Sergei Shoigu, 68, a long-standing buddy of Putin's, was sacked tonight and made secretary of Russia's National Security Council. According to reports, he has suggested that Andrei Belusov, a 65-year-old civilian economist, take Shoigu's place as defense minister in his new administration. In elucidating the decision's timeliness, Dmitry Peskov, the press spokesperson for the Kremlin, stated that the defense ministry must remain innovative and make greater use of defense spending in order to succeed in Ukraine. The decision seems to be an incredible slight to Shoigu, who Putin appointed to lead his war, a close ally, and the longest-serving minister in Russia. Up until now, Putin had supported Shoigu in the face of several military defeats in the first year of the campaign and his public conflict with Yevgeny Prigozhin, the leader of the Wagner mercenary group, who led a violent uprising last year demanding the dismissal of Shoigu. Putin's most major move since the start of his full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 is the reorganization of the military command. The appointment of a civilian economist to the position of defense minister, according to some, shows Putin wants to become more involved personally in war strategy. According to Grant Shapps, the defense secretary of Britain, Putin's puppets will be the new minister of defense. Putin's shuffle coincided with an increase in the number of civilians fleeing Russia's resurgent ground attack in northeastern Ukraine, which has bombarded towns and villages with artillery and mortar fire. As the head of the Russian Security Council, Shoigu will take over from 72-year-old ex-FSB commander Nikolai Patrushev, a fiercely anti-Western conspiracy theorist who is being transferred to a new position. Possibly Putin's closest ally, Patrushev is credited with helping to design a conflict that has left 450,000 Russians dead or injured. In a few days, he'll have a mysterious new job. When PM Mikhail Mishustin was appointed COVID in 2020, Belusov, an economist with no discernible military or security expertise, served as temporary premier for three weeks. Although he seems like a strange choice to win a war that is essentially at a standstill, he is obviously close to Putin. It is important to note that while being nominated to eradicate corruption and revitalize the stalled ministry, he lacks military strategy expertise. Dmitry, 46, the son of Patrushev, replaces his father as deputy premier and minister of agriculture. Timur Ivanov, the deputy of the shogun, was recently detained on suspicion of corruption. Boris Kovalchuk was the candidate Putin suggested to lead the accounts chamber. Yuri, his 72-year-old tycoon father, is regarded as Putin's wallet. This is the largest shakeup Putin has had in years. It coincides with the beginning of his fifth term as president and the third year of the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. Nonetheless, Putin continues to hold on to the two most important security positions in his government, 72-year-old Alexander Bortnikov as head of the FSB and 69-year-old Sergei Nerishkin as director of the SVR Foreign Intelligence Service. There was denial of swirling rumors that General Sergei Armageddon Surovikin will return to his position as chief of staff. According to a spokeswoman for Putin, General Valery Gerasimov, 68, who is thought to be unenthusiastic, will continue to lead. A hardline group of influential pro-offensive military bloggers has singled out Gerasimov and Shoigu for Moscow's alleged military shortcomings. Weeks after his abortive insurrection, Prigozhin, who had marched through Moscow demanding the pair's expulsion, perished in a mysterious plane crash. Following Putin's dazzling inauguration in the Kremlin on Tuesday, the entire Russian cabinet resigned in accordance with Russian law. From the far-off Tuva area, Shoigu was Putin's travel companion in Siberia for many years. He was a lengthy emergencies minister before that. He was employed by the government long before Putin became the autocrat in Russia. He was regarded as one of Putin's most reliable lieutenants before Russia initiated its extensive military attack on Ukraine in February 2022. On masculine nature retreats in the Siberian forest, 
the couple was frequently captured in photos going fishing and hunting together. They are pictured in a well-known photo from 2017 that the Kremlin posted, sitting bare-chested on a lakeshore beach in the sun. Putin's firing indicates that he is extremely concerned about the war's shortcomings as well as possible systemic corruption within his defense ministry. With Belusov's hiring, ruler Putin may be attempting to become more involved in the details of military strategy. Tonight, the Kremlin made an effort to emphasize how important Shoigu is to the battle and how he will continue to serve in certain military capacities. However, this can be an ego-stroking move. During the first year of the operation, Shoigu suffered a number of military losses, such as retreats from the Kharkiv and southern Kherson districts and the inability to take control of Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. In an explanation of the decision's timing, the Kremlin stated on Sunday that the defense ministry had to continue being innovative. In a briefing on the appointments, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov stated that the defense ministry must be completely open to innovation, to the introduction of all cutting-edge ideas, and to the creation of conditions for economic competitiveness, as reported by official media. Peskov stated, the winner of the battlefield is the one who is more receptive to innovation, which is probably why the president decided to support Andrei Belusov. Over the past 10 years, Belusov, who has no military experience, has emerged as one of Putin's most important economic advisors. Sergei Shoigu has overseen over 355k casualties among his own soldiers and mass civilians suffering with an illegal campaign in Ukraine, UK Defense Secretary Schapp stated, perhaps criticizing the decision, Russia needs a Minister of Defense who can reverse that terrible legacy and put an end to the invasion. But all they'll get is another of Putin's pawns. Sergei Lavrov, Russia's longtime foreign minister, will continue in his role, despite rumors that the 74-year-old had petitioned Putin for a pension. The 71-year-old ruler Putin's key nominations for a fresh term that will run until 2030 show that he did not skip a generation. He still hangs out with his pals, most of whom are in their late 60s or early 70s. According to Ivan Klyscz, an analyst at the International Center for Defense and Security, Putin's dissatisfaction with the lack of advancement in the battle in Ukraine may have contributed to Shoigu's unexpected removal. The analysts spoke to Sky News, saying that the cabinet changes should be read in that light because the entire Kremlin is focused on winning the war. He explained that Shoigu had been in a weak position for some time and mentioned the Kremlin's tendency to replace top officials who don't perform up to par. When asked whether his forces would win the war last September, Shoigu, who had watched over his troops' stunning losses and embarrassing defeats on the battlefield, simply shrugged. It was also alleged last year that pressure from Putin caused his daughter to break up with her anti-war partner. That's part of the story with Shoigu, KLYSCCZ said to the station. It is related to some of Russia's battlefront losses in 2022 and its inability to make headway in the war in 2023. However, while Putin's troops seize nine villages in two days, causing hundreds of inhabitants to escape the area under the bombardment, Russian forces are still relentlessly attacking Kharkiv's northern border. Observing that Russia seems to be in control of the conflict at the moment, analyst Christopher Steele told Sky that Shoigu's oyster may indicate that something much deeper is going on within the regime. Replacing your defense minister during an offensive is not the best course of action from a military standpoint, he clarified. This reinforces my belief that there is a deeper issue at hand. Steele went on to say that he believes the abrupt changes point to real quite serious instability right in the heart of this regime, rather than just a reshuffle along normal governmental lines. Shoigu's new position was announced at the same time that Belgorod, a border city in Russia, saw the collapse of a portion of a residential building following what Russian officials claimed was Ukrainian shelling, resulting in 12 confirmed deaths and 20 further injuries. Due to the fierce fighting, at least one Ukrainian battalion was forced to evacuate from the Kharkiv region, giving Russian forces greater territory across less fortified villages in the so-called contested grey zone near the Russian border. By Sunday afternoon, the town of Vovchansk, 
which had a pre-war population of 17,000 and was one of the largest in the northeast, became the center of the fighting. The commander of the Kharkiv Regional Police, Volodymyr Tymoshko, reported that three Russian units were advancing from the town's periphery. Fighting among the infantry is already happening, he declared. According to Tymoshko, a Russian tank was seen on a main route that led to the town, demonstrating Moscow's readiness to use heavy armament. As Russian soldiers fired rounds into the town, an associated press team stationed in a nearby village witnessed columns of smoke rising from it. Teams of volunteers worked tirelessly all day to remove the residents, the majority of whom were elderly, from danger. Governor Ola Sinihubov posted a statement on social media stating that since Friday, when Moscow soldiers began the operation, at least 4,000 citizens have left the Kharkiv region. According to him, there was fierce fighting on Sunday in the northeast front line, where Russian soldiers had attacked 27 towns on the previous day. According to analysts, the Russian effort is intended to take advantage of ammunition shortages before promised supplies from the West can get to the front lines. According to Ukrainian soldiers, the Kremlin is utilizing its standard Russian technique of overwhelming the enemy with weapons and infantry assaults in order to deplete their forces. Russian forces are waging fierce clashes farther south, where Moscow is also gaining territory, and they pose a threat to Ukrainian forces in the northeast by escalating their efforts in what was once a static stretch of the front line. It follows Russia's march strike intensification on villages and energy facilities, which observers interpreted as a coordinated attempt to prepare the stage for an offensive. In the meantime, at least eight people were killed and 20 more were injured when a 10-story apartment building partially collapsed in the Russian city of Belgorod, which is close to the border. According to Russian authorities, Ukrainian bombardment caused the structure to collapse. On the incident, Ukraine has not made any comments. According to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, Kiev's troops are still engaged in counteroffensive operations in seven villages surrounding the Kharkiv region, and stopping Russia's offensive in the northeast is a top priority. Reckoning the Russian offensive intentions is our top priority at this time. Every soldier, sergeant, and officer has a part to play in whether or not we are successful in that endeavor, Zelensky stated. In addition to the five villages that were reportedly taken over on Saturday, the Russian Defense Ministry announced on Sunday that its troops had taken control of four villages along the border in the Kharkiv region of Ukraine. Because of the intense combat and continuous heavy shelling, these places were probably not well protected, which made a Russian assault easier. The Ukrainian government has not confirmed Moscow's victories. However, Tymoshko claimed that Streleka, Pilna, and Borsivica were occupied by the Russians and that it was they who were deploying men to launch attacks on the other beleaguered villages of Hlybok and Lukiansi. He claimed that Russian tactics in Vovchansk were similar to those employed in the Donetsk region's battles for Bakhmut and Avdiivka, where massive aircraft strikes were backed by hordes of infantry assaults. Now the Russians are just using the scorched earth method to advance, erasing Vovchansk from the face of the planet. In other words, they always advance in this manner, they first burn a certain area before the infantry enters it, he explained. According to a Ukrainian unit, Russian forces had taken control of at least one more village late on Saturday, forcing them to flee in other regions. The Hostry Kartuzi unit, a member of the Ukrainian National Guard Special Forces Detachment, claimed in a video released on Saturday night that they were engaged in combat for possession of the village of Hlybok. Our defenders were forced to evacuate several more of their positions today due to intense fighting, and another settlement has fallen entirely under Russian authority. The fighters in the video stated, as of 20 hundred hours, fighting is ongoing for the village of Hlybok. The Institute for the Study of War declared on Saturday that geolocated film seemed to confirm that Russian forces had taken control of Morakovitz and Olinikov, and that it thought reports that Moscow had taken control of Streleka, Pilna, Pletonivka, and Borsivica were true. The recent Russian achievements have been deemed tactically significant by a think organization located in Washington. Russia attempted an abortive assault on Kharkiv, the second biggest city in Ukraine, 
early in the war, but withdrew from its periphery after around a month. Seven months later, in the fall of 2022, they were driven from Kharkiv by the Ukrainian army. The daring counteroffensive convinced Western nations that Ukraine was capable of defeating Russia in combat and deserved their military assistance.